In fact, I could do kubectl uh, describe node, and then in the output, uh, sorry, uh, it's not describe, it's explain. kubectl explain node, and this is going to give me the definition uh, of a node. Uh, so it's telling me, okay, node is a worker node in Kubernetes, thanks. Uh, and then it's giving me all the fields that I will have uh, in a node. I can, uh, so for instance, for, then I can dive down in, in this definition. I can do kubectl explain node.spec. And then it's giving me the specs that I can have uh, but sorry, the fields I can have in a, in the in the spec of a node. Um, I can also add ask a recursive definition. So, for instance, okay, show me the definition of the resource type node and expand all the fields, and that gives me something like that. So it's telling me I have API version kind metadata. In the metadata, I have all these things. And then later I have the spec with all these things as well, etc., etc. So this gives me some introspection abilities. For instance, if I if I want to craft an API request myself, but I don't know exactly which fields to use, um, I could look in the in the API documentation online, but I could also use this kubectl explain thing. So we might wonder, okay, what's the point of kubectl explain? Because okay, fine, it's it's great if you're like a command line warrior and you don't want even want to, to leave the command line to go to the browser, but most of us prefer to have some nice documentation. Um, the reason why we have kubectl explain, like the purpose is that sometimes you will be running um, a version of Kubernetes that is maybe the, the doc is not uh, available yet for the documentation. You're using like a pre-release, uh, you're, you're preparing for a new version, so um, this will let you uh, have the definition of a resource type for the exact version that you're running. Or maybe you will be using uh, custom types. You, you could have custom types in Kubernetes and then those custom types will not exist in the online documentation. So kubectl explain will always uh, show you the definition of a type. Okay. Um, now if I, so if I go back to my uh, get node node one dash OYAML, all right, kind is a node. Now look at what happens if instead of asking for one specific node, I ask for all the nodes. So just like kubectl get node. Now in the output, if I look for the kind, kind is a list. The, the type of the response is not just a single node, but a list of nodes. And if I look into the definition of a list in the kube API, it's going to tell me, well, list has uh, a field called items, and items contains the, well, the, the items in the list. So here I have this items list, and each element of that list is um, a, an API response again. So each time I have, once again, API version, kind, metadata, and so on and so on. When I do this uh, kubectl get node dash oyaml, uh, what I get is the exact response of the Kubernetes API. So this structure with API version kind metadata, that's a raw um, Kubernetes API reply, and we will see more of them later. 